Today, we will be learning about chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. To start things off, let's look at the definition for this disease. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is defined as a preventable and treatable disease characterized by persistent airflow limitation that is usually progressive and associated with an enhanced chronic inflammatory response in the airways and the lung to noxious particles or gases. Comorbidities present affect the overall severity of the disease. Commonly associated comorbid conditions include cardiovascular disease, cerebrovascular disease, the metabolic syndrome, osteoporosis, depression, and lung cancer. This disease can cause effects outside the pulmonary system as well. These extra pulmonary effects include weight loss and skeletal muscle weakness. Let's take a look at the risk factors associated with COPD. They can be grouped into environmental factors and host factors. The environmental factors include smoking, exposure to polluted air, occupational exposures to particles of coal dust, silica, and cadmium, history of recurrent infections, and cannabis smoking. The host factors include airway hyperreactivity and genetic factors, in which deficiency of alpha-1 antitrypsin has been particularly noted as having a strong association with COPD. Now, what exactly is going on in the lungs of patients affected with COPD? Because of airflow limitation combined with premature airway closure, Trapping of gas happens, which leads to hyperinflation of the lungs. This causes a problem in the working of our respiratory muscles and increases the effort required for breathing. The work of breathing is markedly increased, first on exercise, when the time for expiration is shortened. However, as the disease advances, even at rest. Now, let's understand why this airflow limitation occurs. There is enlargement of mucus secreting glands with an increase in the number of goblet cells, accompanied by an inflammatory cell infiltrate. This leads to increased sputum production, which further leads to chronic bronchitis. Also, emphysematous changes cause loss of elastic tissue, inflammation and fibrosis in airway walls, which leads to premature airway closure, gas trapping and dynamic hyperinflation. What do we mean by emphysema? Well, emphysema is defined pathologically as dilatation and destruction of the lung tissue distal to the terminal bronchioles. Let's discuss the clinical features of this disease. An important point to note is that COPD should be suspected in any patient over the age of 40 who presents with symptoms of chronic bronchitis and or breathlessness. Cuff and associated sputum production are usually the first symptoms and are often termed as a smoker's cough. On examination, the patient with severe disease is breathless at rest, with prolonged expiration, the chest expansion is poor and the lungs are hyperinflated. This is visible as having a barrel chest appearance with a protruded abdomen. The patient is usually thin and has loss of muscle mass. Patients with COPD have classically been categorized as pink puffers and blue bloaters based on the presentation of the disease. The pink puffers present with predominant emphysema and the blue bloaters with predominant chronic bronchitis. However, most patients have both emphysema and chronic bronchitis irrespective of their clinical signs. In addition to pulmonary manifestations, Patients with COPD develop systemic problems, including skeletal muscle dysfunction, which is the loss of muscle bulk and skeletal muscle strength, nutritional abnormalities, weight loss, and depression. Skeletal muscle dysfunction is due to a combination of factors such as aging, malnutrition, systemic inflammation, inactivity, hypoxia, and it affects both respiratory and limb muscles. The diagnosis is made on the basis of history, physical examination, and confirmation of airflow limitation with lung function testing. Let's see the investigations we need to do in order to confirm the diagnosis. Spirometry is done and the first expiration volume in one second is measured. If it is less than 70%, even after administration of a bronchodilator, then a diagnosis of COPD can be made. Chest X-ray may be normal or show evidence of hyperinflated lungs, indicated by low, flattened diaphragms and a long narrow heart shadow. There are reduced peripheral lung markings and bullae, which indicate complete destruction of lung tissue producing an airspace greater than 1 cm. Hemoglobin and packed cell volume may be high as a result of persistent hypoxemia and secondary polycythemia. How do you think the management of COPD is done? Broadly, the management of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease focuses on improving breathlessness, reducing the frequency and severity of exacerbations, and improving health status and prognosis. The first thing to do is counsel the patient and try to convince them to stop smoking. Complete cessation of smoking 
is accompanied by an improvement in lung function and slows down the rate of deterioration. To manage breathlessness, therapy with bronchodilators is done. The inhalational route of administration is preferred and the choice of drug should be made based on the needs of the patient. Short-acting bronchodilators may be used for patients with mild disease, but longer-acting bronchodilators are preferred for those with moderate to severe disease. The protocol for treatment is usually inhalation of triotropium bromide, a long-acting, once-daily anti-muscarinic agent, as initial maintenance therapy along with a short-acting beta-2 agonist. A long-acting beta-2 agonist is added to this in patients with persistent dyspnea. In case the patient cannot use inhalers effectively, oral bronchodilators such as theophylline preparations can be given. The fixed combination of an inhaled glucocorticoid and a long-acting beta-2 agonist improves lung function, reduces the frequency and severity of exacerbations, and improves quality of life. Exercise should be encouraged at all stages of the disease, and patients reassured that breathlessness during exercise, while it may be alarming to them, is not dangerous. Multidisciplinary programs that incorporate physical training, disease education, and nutritional counseling reduce symptoms, improve health status, and enhance confidence. COPD is a progressive disease. Acute exacerbations of COPD are characterized by an increase in symptoms and deterioration in lung function and health status. They become more frequent as the disease progresses and are usually triggered by bacteria, viruses, or a change in air quality. They may be accompanied by the development of respiratory failure and of fluid retention and can lead to death. Many patients can be managed at home with the use of increased bronchodilator therapy, a short course of oral glucocorticoids, and if appropriate, antibiotics. However, the presence of cyanosis, peripheral edema, or an alteration in consciousness indicates admission in a hospital. If the patient is admitted in the hospital, controlled oxygen at 24% or 28% should be used with the aim of maintaining a partial oxygen pressure in the arteries of more than 8 kPa without worsening respiratory acidosis. Nebulized, short-acting beta-2 agonists combined with an anticholinergic agent, for example, salbutamol and ipratropium, should be administered. Oral prednisolone reduces symptoms and improves lung function. Doses of 30 mg for 10 days are currently recommended. The patient should be discharged only when they are clinically stable and on their usual maintenance medication. Alright, that's it for the video. Let's do a quick recap. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is defined as a preventable and treatable disease characterized by persistent airflow limitation that is usually progressive and associated with an enhanced chronic inflammatory response in the airways and the lungs to noxious particles or gases. The environmental risk factors include smoking, exposure to polluted air, occupational exposures to particles of coal dust, silica and cadmium, history of recurrent infections and cannabis smoking. Because of airflow limitation combined with premature airway closure, trapping of gas happens, which leads to hyperinflation of the lungs. This causes a problem in the working of our respiratory muscles and increases the effort required for breathing. The work of breathing is markedly increased, first on exercise when the time for expiration is shortened. However, as the disease advances even at rest, COPD should be suspected in any patient over the age of 40 who presents with symptoms of chronic bronchitis and or breathlessness. Cuff and associated sputum production are usually the first symptoms. On examination, the patient with severe disease is breathless at rest, with prolonged expiration, chest expansion is poor, and the lungs are hyperinflated. Broadly, the management of COPD focuses on improving breathlessness, reducing the frequency and severity of exacerbations, and improving health status and prognosis. Acute exacerbations of COPD are characterized by an increase in symptoms and deterioration in lung function and health status. They become more frequent as the disease progresses and are usually triggered by bacteria, viruses, or a change in air quality. Many patients can be managed at home with the use of increased bronchodilator therapy, a short course of oral glucocorticoids, and, if appropriate, antibiotics. However, the presence of cyanosis, peripheral edema, or an alteration in consciousness indicates admission in a hospital.